Yes, a blizzard is coming. Hey. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when you get lemons or limes, what do you do? You make lemonade. So what we need is just to begin to pray. My main concern is for our elderly and for those who do not have homes or for those who are sick, that nothing affect them, that they will be able to keep themselves safe and warm and nobody will be stranded in the streets or the roads or the highways, neither the airport. <laughs> neither the airport. So, I just, this week, uh, again, we, those who are visiting us for the first time, um, if you're looking for a home church, please consider us. And um, if you already have a church, hey, we could be your second home church or even third. But this week, we have a different George making announcements and <laughs> telling us the ways that we are going to be connected. Come on, Rick. And Rick is our lay leader, and I want to make this announcement. As you know, one of the, of the responsibilities of a lay leader, and thank God in this church we have three, so, you know, always plan A, plan B, plan C. <laughs> we have three, but Rick and Alice and as long, as far as he's okay, Greg, you know, because <laughs> he's also dealing with health matters. But this week, Rick will be in charge. Our lay leaders will be in charge. So anything that you need or a consultation or an emergency, call <coughs> Rick. Um, then Alice uh, or, uh, well, Greg if he's okay, but... Rick will say, yes, you can consult with Greg, but let's, uh, Greg needs to be healed too, but he's one of our lay leaders too. So I think you're in fantastic hands. So uh, lay leader, make all the announcements that you need to make. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not shaking my head. <laughs>
or Linnea. So take an opportunity uh, today and tie a knot and say a brief prayer for Linnea and our Linnea Church. But these are wonderful, wonderful ministries. I know personally this week was going to Liberia with us, uh, which is well received. It's amazing. It's just really amazing. So yeah, let us center ourselves to the Lord. Good morning. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. You call and gather us from our separate lives, great God, to hear your word and respond to your revealing. You have appointed us for the work of your church. We seek your guidance, your wisdom, your way. Help us to perceive and understand your law and then to follow you faithfully as your people. Please remain standing and join in the first hymn, Jesus Call Us, page 398.
I believe in an innovative God who does not wait for us to find ourselves, but comes seeking the lost and calling us into a new way. Because Christ has called me in this, I truly believe. Amen. Would the children please come forward for the children's story? Hi, sweetie. Good morning. All right, are you comfortably seated? I want you now to stand. Okay, good. Now, I just want you to raise your hand, right hand, and say, praise God. All right, good. Now I want you to follow me. You do too, you have to do what I do. Nathan, what is your sportsmanship? All right, yes, okay. No, I haven't said sit yet. Please stand. Okay, say hi to the choir. Hi. hi. Thank you for your music. Thank you for your music. All right. Very good. You may be seated. Why did you do all that I told you to do? Because you did. Shh. <laughs> Why, why did you, why did you did what I tell you to do? Yes. Oh my God, he just jumped into the story. Hey, woo, praise God, yes, yes. Precisely, precisely. I was just giving an example that, you know, Jesus was the leader. And he is indeed the leader of the whole world, our spiritual leader. And, you know, we just do as he asked us to do, just to follow him. And you follow me because I'm a follower of Jesus. So I follow, you know, the story. And you follow me because I am your pastor and I follow Jesus. And that goes the way. But you did the punchline. Say it loud again. Jesus is the leader of the whole entire world. Amen. 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 Very good. Very good. And as leaders, I want each one of you also to be leaders. All right? So somebody will follow you. So what you have to do is just to trust that Jesus is giving you whatever you need to be a leader. Has to equip you to Go and do what he asks you, which is followers, and to be also catchers of people. By behaving well, by helping others, by loving others, you can be wonderful leaders. By doing very good in school and following, if you're in a team, like Natalie, for example, just became 
um, one of the captains of cheerleading, but she worked very hard and followed her own leader. Now she's a leader. So each one of you is a leader too in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So could you come closer and so we can pray? Yes, and we will hold hands in a moment. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. I'm not going to give you extras to you because you have the right answer. So you can give it to anybody that you want to. All right? So let us pray. Beloved Jesus, you pray after me. Beloved Jesus, thank you for being a leader. Teach us and equip us to do very well, to be your best leaders in the world. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Very good. Go back to your seats. And at this moment, hi, sweetie. Yeah. Ooh. We come to our prayers of intercession and celebration, and we already celebrated uh, Igmar and Marcy for their, what is it, 58? Wow, that's a lifetime. So praise God for that. Happy, happy anniversary. Any other celebrations that we may have? Yes. Lucy? All right. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. And he was having a Bible study. Praise God for that. Yes, good, good. Any other celebrations? Greg is here. He's doing well. Well, he continue to continue to progress, but... I want to celebrate all the people that checked on me and sent me cards. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes, Royer. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to say I'm very grateful for my wonderful neighbors who were concerned about me with all the snow. And uh, one of my neighbors did my back driveway and another neighbor did the front driveway. And it just was pretty amazing. You know, I didn't expect it at all. I, I just felt really good that people would care enough to, to take that time out for I've been recently widowed, and it was just really a blessing to me. Amen. Amen. Yes, Nathan? He shoveled my uncle's driveway while he was in Vermont, and he was really happy because I was behaving, and oh, my dad's a good man. Amen. <laughs> Wow, praise the Lord. Woo, from the words, you know, from the mouth of babes. Praise the Lord. Ida? Yes. I'd like to celebrate the five month old who got a new Bible Bible. Oh, man. Amen. She goes back and forth. She's had a little bit of and she finally got a heart. All right, all right. A little one that got a heart. Praise God. Praise God. Um, also, I want to celebrate this congregation, and because I know maybe people here do not say it, but I know that people are checking with one another. As Irene said, I know people have been calling one another to make sure that everyone is doing well and fine. And I know, I claim it now, that when this blizzard passed again, no one will be lost, and that this congregation will take care of our elderly and those who are sick, make sure that our children are fine, that everybody will make it through. It is a big monster, but we can overcome that monster in the name of Christ and with the leadership of all the people. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
also down for prayers of concerns. Linda is downstairs. Uh, hi, Linda. She's sitting there. I said, check how this works today. Uh, but also, she's sitting downstairs because she's waiting for uh, a phone call um, from her family. Her sister, Honey, is not doing well. So let us continue to pray for, for Linda's uh, sister, Honey. Also for the Cushing family as they celebrate tomorrow uh, the passing of Debbie Cushing. Um, like prayers for my neighbor Tony, his house burnt last night, and um, I'm sure they're going to tear it down. I think flames were coming out every window. So, mm. young man that just bought the house and did a lot of rehab, so it's pretty sad. Oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Also, I do not want to forget Debbie Harley um, said that Lisa Marie's cancer is shrinking so praise the lord for that we have been praying do not stop praying and debbie said thank you thank you thank you she holds that uh quilt very tight to her heart and takes it with her everywhere she goes every time she goes for chemo so please let us continue to pray for her and we have a long list uh please keep this close to the heart of our prayer concern. Anybody else? Yes? Diane? So we'll continue to pray for her. We'll pray for her. What is her name? Sylvia. 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 We pray also for Michelle. Um, yes, for Michelle Ag Angel, uh, Glenna's daughter and uh, Joey's sister. Um, she is having multiple health issues, so she definitely needs our prayers. Yes, John? Um, I thought prayers Continue to pray for pray for Melissa. It's not always easy, never easy. So at this moment, I'm going to ask Cindy and Lois. Where's Don? Yeah, come here, come here. And lay leader, would you please calm down? So um, as we pray for all these needs, I will ask you also to pray for us as we travel. And again, um, this is a fantastic adventure <laughs> in all the sense of the word. Um, and so that we'll be safe and all the other travelers that are traveling from whole, the whole nation um, to the Holy Land this week, particularly on Tuesday so that God will be with us and that we will experience again the power oh, of being in the land of our Lord. So um, I'm going to put our lay leader in the spot. <laughs> he can pray or uh, Greg. Uh, you, I mean, you know, so pray for us, please. And then we end with the Lord's Prayer as we pray for all these needs. Lord, please look over our travelers as they head to the origin, the beginning of your domain over the earth. Watch over them, provide them with safe travels, 
fill their hearts with the joy that can only come from this experience and bring them back to us to share their stories with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And God, we pray for all the people that we have mentioned. You know them. You know every need. You know every celebration. You know better than anyone what is in our hearts and what the people are needing. All this we ask in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil because that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And thank you. Our next hymn, uh, before we sing uh, 344, let us say to one another, uh, the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you.
The Old Testament reading today comes from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Please stand, if you are able, for the gospel reading, which comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I know that, you know, etiquette said that we do not applause anthem, but with our choir, I just have to say, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. God is good, all and all the time, God is good. amen, Ada. Yes, yes. Let us bow our heads in silent prayer before our God for a moment. You know, when I read um, Jonah's passage for today, I don't know how many times I have read this passage, but again, um, the, I, just, I just was thinking about that verse that says, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. You know, that, that just hmm, hit me for a moment. It reminds me, as a matter of fact, last week, uh, reading from Samuel. Remember when Rick was bringing us that <coughs> wonderful message? That the word of the Lord came to Samuel, to young Samuel. Not two, but three times. As a matter of fact, it was four times. In Samuel's story, you know, the young boy had no idea what was going on. So he had to go to Eli, the priest in the temple, um, to receive instructions, you know, to, to get an explanation. And, and Eli said to him, you know, what he needed to do. Eli uh, said, when he realized that the boy was not dreaming, that he was really listening to God's voice, he said, the next time you hear the voice, just say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Hmm. And he went back to sleep, and what happened? Again, he woke, was woke up, and he heard the voice of God again. You know, I love the way that Rick last week uh, prepared the text, you know, how, how he preached about it, and, and I love when he just went out to the people and asked about people's call, about how people felt God's call. It was so interesting to hear the different stories, how people heard the voice, how was the resistance, and then how people then later on surrender. Uh, so today, in both Jonah and Mark, we continue to hear the stories about call, about God's call. Hmm, maybe, maybe God is trying to say something to all of us, don't you think? You know, when this repetition, of course, it's using the lectionary, but I think God uses any mean, any channel to get our attention. So, you know, the, the lectionary reading brings us to, in Jonah, bring us to the middle of the story. Not at the beginning, but in the middle of the story. I believe most of us are familiar with the first part of that story from our Sunday school class. Uh, but if by any chance you are not, let me refresh our memories. The first time God said to Jonah, a prophet, you know, a prophet of the northern kingdom of Israel in about eighth, the 8th century before Christ, you know, God talked to that older man and said, get up and go to Nineveh. We can hear this is not the gentle voice that he used for Samuel. But get up and go to Nineveh. What do you think this man with all, you know, life experience who was used to hear God's voice, what he did? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Uh-uh. He said, are you kidding me? You must be kidding me. He was 
not really like young Samuel. John, as a matter of fact, he got up and he went in the opposite direction, away as he could from Nineveh. It's like, a, you know, the Lord will call and say, hey, Linda, you know, we want you. I mean, God says to you, we, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I want you to go to Boston. And Linda will say, I am not too familiar with this area. I'm from Tennessee, correct? <laughs> but I heard that Boston is terrible. I mean, the traffic, it's in all directions. You could get lost and nobody will help you. And then if you stop in the middle of a crossway, then, you know, somebody will be beeping the heart. Move, move. And you know, you will feel like, a, uh uh, so I'm not going to Boston. So where do you go? Springfield. <laughs> Opposite direction. <laughs> So, you know, so that's what exactly what uh, Jonah did. He went in the opposite direction. However, this prophet, huh, you know why he went so far away, or at least tried to go so far away? Because the task that he has, get up and go to Nineveh and preach to them. The word was repentance. You need to call those people my attention and tell them that if they don't get their life straight, I'm going to finish with them. And you know, Jonah did not want to do that. He did not want to do that at all. At all. He was aware of the wickedness that has come before the, these people. You know, he thought that he had a better sense of what they needed, what needed to happen with Nineveh. So, in the midst of his running away, a storm caught him. He was in a boat, and the storm was very bad, and as the story said, the sailors got so, so worried that he was thrown out of the boat. And then he just was just drowning. And he claimed for God for help. And a big fish came in and boop, and swallowed him. For those wondering, what kind of big fish swallowed Jonah? I'm sorry, I don't have, I don't know, was an orca or was a big whale or, you know. But I just want you to remember that this is a parable in the Old Testament. A story of great symbolism. So for the majority of the biblical scholars, the sea storm represents chaos and danger, turmoil, and the big fish that swallow Jonah, they have been suggested, is a sy symbol of Jonah's consciousness and soul. His soul. So Jonah was wrestling, wrestling inside himself, you know, about what he was thinking about the Ninevites. How could you want me to go and preach to these people who had harmed us so much, who the only thing that they have done is hurt us. And you expect me to go there? I mean, have you gone mad, God? And then on the other hand, but I have seen the way that you have worked. I have all these stories of how you treated people in the past, of your ways of salvation. Oh, God. And he kept questioning God's command to him. And it was like he was drowning, drowning in his own self, need for self-control, in his in his pride, 
about thinking that he knew more than God. Also, deep, deep inside, Jonah knew what was going to happen. So after he prayed, he finally surrendered. And he says that the fish came and threw him to the seashore. What is, is that seashore? That Jonah came to his senses. That he was able to come to his senses and totally surrender to God's will. Let me jump. Fast forward to the story in Mark from Andrew, Simon, and Zebedee. These men did not hesitate, did not question God. When the call came, they immediately, immediately jumped. There was no resistance, no cold waiting. No, let us think about it. No prejudgment. No need for control and pride. What was the difference between the two of them? Well, I think what, what happened was that for centuries, these disciples have been waiting. These men have been waiting for the Messiah. They have been listening and paying attention to the signs of the one who was going to cut to the chase, to the one who was going to denounce what was wrong in the world. They have been paying attention, and they knew that the Christ that called them to follow them was the one who had the power to forgive sins. And no matter what may happen in the future, they knew that somehow, some way, they were going to be well. So that's why they say yes to the call to follow him. So my friends, today I have a simple question for you. Very simple. What about if Jesus says, follow me? Follow me. Go to blank. I think for Cindy, for Lois, Don, and me, I, I, am, I am so at peace. I don't know why, but I feel this call. I think we all, I do want to go to the Holy Land, particularly at this time there is so much turmoil. Just as a messenger of peace, I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm not going to tempt God or anybody there. But, but just to be a present that there are Christians that still in solidarity with those who are at this moment <laughs> suffering. Suffering for the conflict between brothers and sisters in their own land. So, please think about what is your call? <coughs> what is your call? What that call means for you today? We all have been called to follow Christ. And when we answer yes, When we answer, yes, you are my Lord and Savior, we also said yes to whatever you want us to do. But are we really ready? Are we like Jonah? But Lord, uh, this is my way I think things should be. Or, or could we be like the disciples? Whatever you say. Thank you, Nathan. You are being a little prophet among ourselves today. Thank you. So, for Samuel, my friends, the call was to be a prophet. 
You are our leader, Samuel, today. For the prophet Jonah was to be the preacher of second chances, of repentance for the people of Nineveh. For Andrew, for Simon, and Zebedee was to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. What is the call for us today? Amen. Let us now be prepared for our offerings. Please remain standing for the offering prayer. Bless, O Lord, these gifts and offerings, that they may be a sign of our intent to serve you. We have heard your call to be your disciples, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and bring wholeness and healing to all who are hurting. If one of your people suffers, we all suffer. But if one of your people is honored, we all rejoice together in your name. Amen. And please join in the hymn, Lord of the Dance, page 261.
Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me? Joyce turned 20. Ruthie Keller is sick. Let's follow Christ. Dancing, dancing in our heart. Let us follow with the blessing of the Almighty God, the love of Jesus who call us and the Holy Spirit who equip us to move forward with God. Amen.